This bulletin is brought to you by Good Morning Vihalia. Enjoy the warmth and indulge in the deliciousness. Good morning, good morning. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Rosma Mansour, the wife of former Prime Minister Najib Abdul Razak, turned up early at the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission headquarters in Putrajaya today, 10 whole minutes ahead of her appointment. She was summoned to the building for her second round of questioning in three months. So, early in, early out, huh? Well, doesn't look like it. Seven hours later, there was still no sign of her. And right now, at the time of recording, which is 8pm, there's still no sign of her. She hasn't come out yet. Her previous visit to the MACC back in June lasted just five hours. MACC Chief Commissioner Shukri Abdul said two days ago that their investigation on Rosma was complete and that they have handed the report over to the Attorney General. Shortly before that, the New Straits Times reported that Rosma could potentially face up to 20 charges. PKR's ongoing party elections are raging on with the full steam of a bulldozer and the efficiency of a broken hamster wheel. As of last night, two members were removed from the party because they apparently caused a commotion. Yeah, it looks like it's haram to be angry in the PKR funhouse. Party President Anwar Ibrahim then said that the party will press on and continue to use the new electronic voting system, the system that is partly to blame for the blunder in the state of Kedah, where the results of the PKR polls in the state had to be invalidated, resulting in a scuffle. <laughs> Wow, now that's a catch. Okay, on to some talk about the other polls that are coming up, the Port Dixon by-election. Well, first of all, former MIC Secretary General Kumar Aman, who said that he wanted to contest the seat to, quote, teach Amno a lesson. He announced today that he decided not to contest anymore as an independent candidate. He said that he arrived at this decision after discussions with a lawyer and taking into account that the MIC was not fielding a candidate in its traditional seat. Furthermore, it's also kind of obvious that he can't get a message through to Amno since Amno has decided to boycott the by-election altogether. However, he said that after visiting and talking to the grassroots in Port Dixon, he said that there are many woes and issues faced by the Indian community and requests that PKR President-elect Anwar Ibrahim look into this matter seriously. Moving on, just mere days after Anwar warned PKR leaders against offering projects for votes, saying that disciplinary action will be taken, and then after that saying that, oh, he meant that as a warning, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it's happening in the party. Yeah, about that. PKR Youth Coordinator Ahmad Shukri Chair Abdul Razak filed a report with the MACC against the aid of Works Minister Baru Bian. Shukri explains that contracts and funds offered by Baru's aid were in exchange for votes in the ongoing party poll. Baru issued a statement later saying that he welcomes any investigation by the authorities into his ministry. This is worrisome to Anwar, of course, who will be meeting Barubian tomorrow over the matter which he has described to be compelling and disturbing. And now on to the infamous case all the way in Hollywood brought against the Wolf of Wall Street producers Red Granite Pictures by the United States Department of Justice. It has been closed, yes, closed, case closed, after the DOJ's money laundering and asset recovery section confirmed the receipt of 21 million US dollars recently. This payment is said to have satisfied a consent judgment issued in March this year and thus brought the case to a close. The film production company had been accused by the DOJ of using money stolen from one MDB to finance films including The Wolf of Wall Street, Daddy's Home and Dumb and Dumber 2. However, Red Granite did not admit liability or wrongdoing under the settlement, but they were ordered to pay $60 million. Yesterday, US-based entertainment publication Variety, citing an industry source, said that Red Granite had secured a $60 million US dollar loan from Brevet Capital to finance the settlement. Barisa National has finalized and unveiled its shadow cabinet, which consists of parliamentarians from AMNO, MIC, MCA, and Parti Bersatu Rakyat Sabah. AMNO Secretary General Anwar Musa said that the coalition has adopted a portfolio committee system, which sees at least two MPs assigned to each portfolio to serve as a check and balance, as well as a policy watch. The shadow ministers will be formulating alternative policies that will compete with those from Pakatan Harapan. Anwar then said that MPs from Gagasan Sabah and Gabungan Parti Sabah Sarawak are encouraged to join the committee. Malaysia's first multi-grains brand, the champion is Good Morning.
All right, let's wrap things up for the day. In the newly unveiled Barisan National Shadow Cabinet, Rumbau MP Kairi Jamaluddin was named as the Shadow Finance Minister. Perhaps in the spirit of democracy, he reached out to Twitter Jaya for some suggestions and for help with crafting a shadow budget. Do you want to say in it? Well, of course you do. Our federal budget is messed up. And it is anyone's guess if Pakatan Harapan will take our woes, you know, us, the B40, and those who aren't filthy rich, into consideration when they craft their budget for 2019. You might want to email Kyrie with your idea, or, or better yet, let's respond in the comments and tag him. Let's talk it out in the comments. Let's talk it out on Twitter. Let's talk it out on Facebook. Let's take screenshots of YouTube and send it to him, all right? Hit like, follow, subscribe, and share this video. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching.